Excuse me, can I talk to your manager, please? <laughs> hey. I didn't know such a beautiful face worked here. Oh, wait, yeah, I did. No, not you, obviously. No, your co-worker. Yeah, the one standing over there. <laughs> what am I doing here? Well, I was really interested in what the inside of this place looked like. Yeah, it was a fascinating question. You know when you have like a scientific urge to discover, right? You have to observe the environment around you and find out more about it just for the pure discovery of it all. So, me and my experimenting little derriere had to come in here and find out all about this wonderful facility that you call a workplace. And how do you know that's not why I'm here? I'm a man of many confusions and talent and ambiguous reasons for being here. Plus it says I'm supposed to be here in the script, you know? <laughs> yeah, okay, fine, fine. I came in to visit you. Why? Because I was walking past here and I was like, oh yeah, don't they work here? Or I heard you worked here anyway. So... <laughs> I wanted to find out if it was true. Like I said, scientific experimentation. Yes, that. And one of my scientific conclusions, my conclusions are that you work here. Another great day for Hero Man. With, you know, imagine like a cape, swoosh, going. So. When you work here, do you tend to do so for long periods of time? Yeah? God, that must suck. Well, I just mean, you know, wouldn't it be vastly superior to not work instead? I'm just spitballing here. <laughs> you don't think... I don't know, more interesting things could happen away from here. Yeah, well, maybe you should get away from here. Could be today. I mean, I'm not the master of your life or anything, but could be. Why not? You know? There's a big, wide world out there ready for you to explore and... You're here. And I'm guessing, you know, you've been here before and you've been here before and does anything really happen? I'm not, I'm not ragging on your job directly. It's not this job, it's just most jobs. <laughs> I don't know, I'm in a weird mood today. I just feel like, uh, saying quote-unquote true things and do the unfortunate soul that happens to be in the way. True things like, well, <laughs> you know, I came in here because I, mean, I saw you through the window and uh, There's, please don't say this the wrong way, but there's something about the scene that just seemed kind of a shame. I mean, here you are, a person who I <laughs> think has a lot to offer the world, you know? And you're kind of, well, here. And my mind just kind of went a whole long train of thoughts that <laughs> included the many incompetent people in positions of influence and power 
It includes people who, I guess, hold other people back out of jealousy or fear of losing their spot or Okay, skipping past many chapters of this, I basically looked at a person who I think is very... has a lot going for them. I see you working here, and I know that it's not forever and all that, but... Well, not to be pessimistic. But the number of people I know who have been... waiting for the day where their life just gets sorted out, and then they take on more and more responsibilities, you know? And you're working here, but only for a little bit, but are oh, you gonna move out into a new flat and then you're gonna find out what you really wanna do with yourself, but then you meet someone and then your life's about them for a little bit, but then you break up and, you know, by that time, more time has gone past and you still don't really know what you wanna do yourself, but you keep working at the same kind of job and <laughs> I promise you I've, uh, one of the advantages of having older siblings. You can kind of just people watch their friends, you know. And I've seen so many of those friends that had a lot of potential who I think now are... I think they think that they're too far along a certain path to change. I mean, hey, maybe I'm just projecting onto you. Maybe you're fine. <laughs> maybe this is all just me. Maybe it's just a lack of confidence in the direction of my own life, or maybe it's the fact that, you know, when you have to make a choice, when you have to try and pick what you're going to do with the rest of your life, that it's paralyzing, it's terrifying, because, well, the committing to one thing is closing all these other doors, right? It's like, okay, this is where I'm going. When you can't... <laughs> Let's use a simple analogy. If you go to the cinema and you go and see the action film, you can't go and see the romance film at the same time. You can't go and see the comedy film at the same time. You're committing to one use of your time, and that's a very small example, but really that's an analogy for wider life. You choose to do this career, you can't do the other things with that time. You can always change later. And don't... <laughs> let yourself get drawn in by sunk cost fallacy it's never too late to change direction but well certain things are harder <laughs> I mean for example one thing I can definitely rule off and not that I had the talent for it anyway but I'm not going to be a professional sportsman anytime soon or well anytime ever because I should have been you know in all these academies and stuff like that by now and the fact that I'm not means, hey, that's not what it is for me. But for things that aren't limited by athletic prowess, I suppose, there's always time. Maybe I sit there thinking, you know, I'm going in a certain direction which I guess people wanted for me and understand why but maybe in the end it's uh, <laughs> why did I just go on this big ramble with you <laughs> I, uh, you're a good listener you know that I guess um <laughs> maybe I really needed to huh Maybe that's why I came in here. My subconscious told me that it was a good idea. I was just kind of drawn in here and I don't really know why, but... You ever have that feeling where sometimes you're just drawn towards a certain thing and it's almost, it's not like your rational brain, it's not your mind. It's not a thought through thing, you just kind of go towards where it feels like you're supposed to go. I don't know if that makes any sense, but I guess it kind of felt like I was supposed to come in here and just talk to you. 
openly for some reason. I uh, hope it wasn't too weird for you, you know? <laughs> um, yeah, I, huh? What was I going to say? I, well, yeah, I did kind of cut off, didn't I, before getting to the punchline. <laughs> I guess all I was saying essentially was that I think you have a lot of possibilities and a lot of options and I don't know with your facial expression when I was looking through the window when I looked in here I just I guess I saw in some ways maybe a reflection as I say maybe I'm projecting onto you and I feel like I have certain talents in life and Maybe I'm not giving them a fair chance. Maybe I should be a poet or a professional wrestler or a world famous rock star or or maybe I should have been a stand up comedian or <laughs> a farmer. A professor. Hey, who even knows? Maybe I should have been an assassin or something like that, you know? Maybe not that one so much. That's a bit strange. <laughs> Leave that one to Mr. Bond and acquaintances, but... You know what I mean, right? It almost feels like... Well, maybe that's what's nice about dreaming. When you dream, you can just... Go off and be whatever you want for a night, or... However long it is you dream for. In the, you know, you're a, whatever it is, you're a DJ or, <laughs> and, yeah, I just, as much as it's scary to pick something and to have to acknowledge that the other things that you could be doing with your time you won't be doing with your time because if you're putting your full effort into one thing you can't have something else you know not really not properly if you wanted to be let's say the DJ you're spending all your time in music you can't also be a this you can't also be a this or at least it's very very difficult to there are some people <laughs> His inspiration for you is a guy called Ryan Hayashi, who is a college professor, the head of his own dojo, his own martial arts dojo, and a world-class magician. So that's a pretty cool triple life. But uh, I guess I want to. I guess I don't know. As I say, I looked through the window and I just saw someone who looked like you had the same facial expression that I've seen on so many of my older siblings, friends, faces. Um, you know, the ones that I feel like never really did everything they could have. And I think so many people are afraid to feel that they never fully try. They'd almost rather have the, I could have done this than to try their hardest and have it thrown back at them. Because at least they can all say, I could have done something, but... Really, in the end, I think we always... mostly regret the things we don't do. So I look through this window at someone who... Well who I want to say more to than I've said. <laughs> and I kind of see someone who I feel like is being thrown around by the waves of influences that we all get put under and not really picking their own path. And as scary as it is to pick one of those one doors, to pick one of those films, to torture the analogy even further, it's 
a lot better to pick a film than it is to stand out in the hallway and not watch anything. And the worst thing about that is that you'll watch other people going into films and think, it could have been me, but you never pushed and pushed and pushed and when people told you you couldn't, you let them tell you that. There's another recommendation for you after work. A song called Transition by Underground Resistance. Well, anyway, I am. Um, I guess I'll leave you to work now. Hmm? I said I wanted to say more to you. I am. Um, well, I think I've laid off enough. <laughs> I've laid on enough heavy things for the day, have I not? Maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> um, well, hell, I mean, why not? In the spirit of you regret the things you don't do. I. Uh, the reason I look through that window and it breaks my heart is that I really, really like you. And. I have for a long time and I've just never really found a way or a time to say it. So there it is, why not? I like you and I want to go out with you sometime and <laughs> but maybe all these phobias and fears and observations laid out so openly. I know it also scare a lot of people away. And if that's you, then fair enough. And something I guess people don't really realize about me necessarily that I'm not actually the most confident guy in the world in some ways. It's obvious that I have talents that are not fully used, I guess. Maybe not to you, I don't know. But I think... In some ways the biggest talent I have, the biggest ability I have is to be able to... Just lay certain emotions or feelings or thoughts out there and... Huh. I don't know. Maybe if I go into every workplace and talk to everybody I find attractive, then one of those people thinks about something they might not have thought of otherwise, and maybe it leads them to make a really great life decision. Or maybe it leads them to throw away a good job and chase a dream which was never going to work, and in 15 years' time, broke and disillusioned, they hate me. <laughs> But I think the biggest thing I miss about being a kid is when you were a kid, you woke up excited because you got to go and play outside or excited because of this or that. And it's one of those thoughts that just hit me one day that I don't know when it happened, but at some point it stopped being fun to just try. So that's kind of my new life philosophy of the last literally few days. Just do what you would have done as a kid. Just say exactly what you see and be honest with people. First off, being yourself, I guess. And yeah, have fun trying. So I'm going to try and at least tell the people how I can tell, <laughs> I can possibly tell these ideas and maybe they get something from it. If not, well, I tried, right? And it's fun to try. Not get too jaded with the world. By the way, your uh, manager, I'm assuming that's your manager, has been looking very angularly in my direction for the past, I would say, six or seven minutes. So, uh, I think that probably means you're supposed to be working and I'm ruining it.
So I'm going to give him a jaunty little wave. Hello. And probably leave you to it. But whenever you get off work, um, let me know. Okay. I, <laughs> I want to start honestly trying. And the first thing I want to try is I want to go out with you. Badly, madly, I really want to. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it doesn't work. But I want to try. If you do, of course. Kind of signing you up. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, angry manager. I'll just leave. Uh, yeah, okay. 